talk to us why scale helps. Sure. I was having a little trouble hearing the audio, so just uh, if you could bear with me. Um, you know, the, 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 the merger and, and, and increasing our scale, really more than doubling our size, um, it, it's not that the scale of our assets necessarily impact our, what we're able to do, but really what it is is, is merging our two investment teams and, and greatly enhancing our ability to invest across all asset classes globally, um, I think is probably the most impactful component to the merger. Um, when we, when we, Danielle Pinto, who's the chairman and CEO of Stanhope and I started talking about this partnership, you know, we both decided that the most important thing was that our clients were the primary beneficiaries of growing and scale and, and, and this merger. And we think that that really relates primarily to the investments that we put our clients in and the, the, the depth of our investment team. And so this combination, you know, magnifies our abilities um, on both sides of, of the Atlantic yeah. um, to provide even more interesting opportunities and enhancements to our clients' portfolios. It's an interesting deal here, Keith. And of course, I mean, we're at a time now uh, as investors and of course uh, as market watchers where uh, I guess you can say we're kind of going through a transformational period. You talk about uh, where Treasury rates right now lie and the idea that a lot of investors have had to sort of seek out uh, alternatives to uh, what had normally been kind of the safe haven investment. Can you talk a little bit more about some of those alternatives, what people are asking you about, what they want to gravitate to? Sure. I mean, you know, uh, the market's sort of playing into our, our strong suit, um, but both, both at Forbes Family Trust and at Stanhope Capital. We focus uh, a lot of our efforts on sourcing private investments for our clients. Of course, our portfolios have public equities and, and, and other publics, but we think that that performance is going to be driven next year by investing in privates and um, hedge, venture, um, ESG investments, uh, private credit we think is going to be interesting. Um, and as far as you know, fixed income and 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 rates, we just we think that there's not going to be a lot, a lot of juice there for our clients. And so we we always focus on privates as an enhancement to our clients' portfolios. But we've been definitely leaning heavily into alternatives, which is really our our bread and butter. Keith, I want to pick up on something you just mentioned, which is ESG. We've seen, broadly speaking, a push toward ESG in 2020. How are your clients thinking about those kind of investments? Where do you see those opportunities? Yeah, I mean, our, our clients have always, you know, we're an ultra high net worth business. We have a lot of large, sophisticated family offices that we work with. And so they've actually been focused on ESG for, for quite some time. I think that What's been interesting about ESG generally for, for other, maybe even less um, ultra high net worth and perhaps some high net worth and mass affluent is as opposed to it being, you know, a small part of people's portfolio, they really want us focusing in on privates that, you know, have ESG components. And so we've, we've, we've been doing this work for a decade and we just continue doing it and now our portfolios um, just have larger allocations. It's it's really our clients really want to make a difference, and you know of course they want returns, and that's our job. But mm -hmm. I think if you marry the two, it's pretty powerful. As you just mentioned, CEO of Stanhope, Mr. Pinto, he was also discussing. Uh, potential further acquisitions that you might make now you're combined, looking into areas of growth, Asia and the like. Where are you seeing the most inbound interest for wealth management at the moment? Um, when you say inbound interest, wh what are you referring to? Well, in terms of new clients, where in the world is of interest? Oh. Where do you think that the activity would lie for you to grow your client base? Yeah. Um, well, yeah. Danielle and I have discussed Asia. We have we have we have plenty of, of work to do. I think um, between the United States and Europe, and you know, as you know, you know, the, there's an office in Geneva, and that's a that's a huge springboard into the Middle East and clients there. So, you know, I think that in addition to those areas, I think we're getting incoming more incoming from Latin America. We have the Florida office, which has been impactful to that. Um, and I think that we're going to continue to get more global families that are both 
based in the U.S., members are based in the U.S. and in Europe. Um, you know, there's tax issues involved that we're, we're well equipped to deal with. And just, again, the breadth of investment experience and enhancements to each other's um, investment platforms is, is going to be very impactful to people's portfolios. I think that, you know, you know many, many of these wealthy families who have known one or the other firm, you know, existing clients and prospects and people that we've just had in our universe for quite some time find it an extremely compelling combination and are interested. Yeah. It's not even where they're from. It's sort of, you know, how they're placed. They're, they're, they're some of the wealthiest families in the world. Yeah. And I think the global component to what we're doing is exactly what they're looking for.